<laughs> hey, welcome to Love KC Live tonight. We're so glad that you're here. And uh, we, we take time on Sunday nights to talk about prayer and how God works through everyday people. And it's always our goal at Love KC Today Live Prayer to be able to introduce you to people who are learning about prayer. And sometimes the people that we're talking to are are new in the faith. Other times people are, are veterans or anywhere in between. Uh, sometimes they're ministry leaders. Sometimes they're people who maybe wouldn't consider themselves a leader at all. But the one thing we have in common with each one of these leaders is that uh, we're learning to pray. We're learning how that God wants to visit, talk, commune with his kids, and that prayer is easier than we think it is. So we we try to put the cookies on the bottom shelf is what we often say. And tonight, we're really very glad to have Amy Mitchell and her daughter, Mariah, with us. They have founded a ministry in Kansas City called Anchor Her. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. We're Thank glad you. to be part of it. Yeah. So you two jump in. Feel free to share and take turns or uh, however you want to do this. But um, we're excited to hear this story, not only of what you're, how you're growing in prayer, what God is doing to answer prayers, but tell us first just a little bit about uh, if if viewers might not know what Anchor Her is or know who Amy Mitchell or Mariah is, then tell us a little bit about yourselves and let's start there. Sure. So Anchor Her is a ministry that helps women impacted by incarceration, domestic violence, and addiction. All those three go together, as we all know. And um, our story kind of, I guess, started Anchor Her. Because when I was a young mom, I almost went to prison. So that's the incarceration part. And then I also was going through a lot of domestic violence. And I ended up close to losing custody of Mariah when she was a young girl. And so I had to go into a shelter for a time being. And there I got a mentor that came alongside me and really impacted my life, changed my life, helped me with just doing the next best thing. And so I really think that God was like putting all the pieces together, even though I wasn't walking with God at the time, I knew of him. He was just like, I don't know, it's like laying out breadcrumbs of what this ministry was going to be mm -hmm. through my life. So it's literally just what he took me through is what we take the girls through. Mm -hmm. We meet with girls that are coming out of jail or just even addiction centers. And we it's hard when they're in jail because a lot of ministries go inside the jail, which is awesome. And then a lot of ministries are outside the jail, but we literally meet them inside the jail and walk it out with them because that was so pivotal for me, for someone to meet me in the shelter and then help me walk it out because that's when the real work starts, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what we do. And we meet them at coffee shops, local coffee shops like Homer's, and we'll sit there and go through the critical reentry needs that they have. Because when they need tangible things and tangible items, like it's hard just to talk about the gospel at that point when they're hungry, you know, mm -hmm. they need fed. And so we do the practical needs first. And then they come to our support group mm -hmm. on Monday nights and they get to hear the gospel. And we're just seeing so much progress. We're seeing these women's, their lives are changes, changing. They're getting their children back in the custody, mm -hmm. staying off drugs. Man, I'm telling you, I, these numbers couldn't even... I can't even have dreamed and prayed this well, you know, like it is just going so well and we're so thankful. God is just doing so much. That's a great story, Amy. I love that. Mariah, Mariah, what's it like for you having, having lived this, what kind of changes have you seen and what role do you get to play in the ministry? Um, I get to come alongside her and help in all these needs. And um, it's just been so amazing to see you meet these women and just to see the hope light up in their eyes that there is like a purpose for them and they don't just have to live in survival, but they can thrive and have a dream. And it's just been so beautiful to do that and get to pray with them and walk it out and mentor them. And um, it's just been amazing to see them be so successful. That's she exciting. prays for me a lot too. <laughs> she <laughs> prays and intercedes. And when I'm freaking out, she's like there to calm everything down. She's so pivotal in the ministry. Yeah. It would almost seem like in a way that Mariah's proof that, that someone can do this, that a mom can, you know, with the grace of God, get back in control of, of her life and can uh, get reunited with her family. And uh, this can have a better ending. Very good. John, so you, you've seen this up close for some time now. So uh, what are your thoughts here? 
I have. I have. I. I hope I've told Amy often, but she encourages me and to keep pressing on, keep pressing forward. I don't do a fourth of what these two ladies do, but um, but to keep to. Keep, I know how big prayer is for the two of them, and how how vital God's word is a part of their ministry because that's what they lean on. <clears throat> and I, I also know that they have had many, many months in the cave, you know, going, how are we going to fight our way out of this place? You know, where we're at, not only financially, but just the need was great. And, but they're, they're making a huge impact in, not only in the in in the jail system, but in the RCTC, which is for rehabs, and also you know when they when they come out, they're there for them as well, which is just awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, thank you, John. So let's uh, let's go with the first question, and either one or both of you feel free to answer. Uh, what's at the top of your prayer list right now? Okay. Um, at the top of the list right now is really to be coming sustainable because I feel like sometimes we are crippled by our own success, I would say, because things are happening so fast. And these women, like they're becoming the leaders mm -hmm. and it's true discipleship because mm -hmm. they're now the ones going back into the jails and we're training them up to be the next people going in. So it's awesome. And everything's moving fast, but everything came so fast for us. And there's such a huge need out there that um, we didn't get some of the pay under us that we might have needed and stuff. We're trying to build up our board and different things just to keep us to continue going. Mm -hmm. That's a big prayer need right now. Mm -hmm. And um, also, we always are praying for our girls. Mm -hmm. We we talk to them throughout the week, and we have a lot of intercessors working and praying for them daily. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amy. Mariah? Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, just, I think we've kind of switched a little bit as, our, as we prayed and just growing in the ministry, and I feel like at the beginning, we were always kind of coming with, you know, what we think should happen or going with our prayer needs and now just really coming to seek the Lord. Like, what is your agenda, Father? Like, what wow. do you have for these ladies? What do you have for us? What are the next steps? And really just um, seeking him and what his agenda is. That's so good. I think, I think that, um, Amy, the place you're in as a, as a, a new not-for-profit and serving in the way that you do, it's almost inevitable if you do well you hit these crisis points where you kind of outstrip your the beginning resources that you have. And it's not just money, it's time and it's, um, you know, bandwidth, it's everything else. And so I'd love to pray for you and anchor her for uh, this need. So let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing through Anchor Her. I thank you, Father, for the way that you're meeting tangible needs in real lives and that there's transformation happening. And these are things that can only happen by your power. So Lord, we give you praise and we thank you for it. We know, Lord, that without you being in the middle of it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't see the kind of life change that it does, but you are. And so we thank you. Lord, along with that, we just pray for your servants, for Amy and for Mariah and ask, Lord, that you would supply their needs. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides you know our needs even before we ask. You're the one who told us that. And so we come to you. You said we're two or three are gathered in your name, that we can ask you for whatever we need. And then we can have that for which we ask. So, Lord, we're, we're thanking you that provision is on the way, that you are supplying, Lord, both the amount of income that, that it requires, the amount of resources that Anchor Her requires, the right um, energy, that Amy and Mariah and others can give. Lord, in addition to that, we pray for open doors. We pray for the right partnerships. We pray for, Lord, for things that are on your vision list for Anchor Her that might not even be quite clear yet. You told us that we often see it in a mirror dimly. And, Lord, we know that, that as we get closer to the vision, it often becomes more detailed. And so we pray for the next steps to be very clear. And I thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. I pray protection 
for, for you around these ladies and around the ladies they're working with. And I pray, Lord, that, that every single step they take will be blessed and protected and that you'll expand their borders, Lord. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what's the grand vision? If you're if you're going to go big picture now. So we talked, I like to think of the first question as kind of like we zeroed in on the the request at the top of your list. But if you wanna if we want to go wide now, uh, what's the grand vision look like? What are you praying for? If you were to talk about something that might even be so big, you weren't sure if you actually could even say it. Uh, what's the what's the big vision? Well, it's always been to go global because it was something that God given us at the beginning. Because globally, it's a crisis. It's a crisis of women in need, and we want to see women home with their families. We want to see women home in their communities, sharing Christ and sharing their God stories. Mm-hmm. Isaiah sixty one. If we could say what our whole big picture is, it's Isaiah sixty one, and we are literally seeing them literally build up the cities, the ruined cities, like they're the ones doing it. They're coming out of those old places, you know, and it truly is beauty from ashes. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, global, because it's a global need. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mariah? Yes, I would say the same thing, just global and just getting this out to different states. And it really is making disciples what we need. Disciples making disciples and it's just spreading in Kansas City and we just want to see it everywhere. Hey, Mariah, I'm not sure I caught all of that. You might want to move the microphone a little bit closer, but I'd love to hear you say that again. Yeah, no, I was just um, agreeing just globally. We want to see this. Um, we just truly are seeing disciples, making disciples and just spreading the gospel. And that's, you know, great commission. And we just want to see it spread everywhere. And we're seeing it in Kansas City and we just want to see it more around globally. So, yeah. Well, I love that. You know, dream, dream big because we have a big God, right? If we, if we have small dreams, it's, we're probably thinking of what we can do at our own strength. Big dreams really really point to the the faith we have in the God to to whom we pray. So, John, can you can you pray for that request? Absolutely, absolutely. Lord, you tell us in Acts two, you know that, that, that you will you will download dreams to your faithful ones and and. I, I echo the, the dream that Amy and Mariah have that they they don't stop until there's no one else left to tend to and um, in the world and that they keep pressing on. And the only way to do it, and they understand it, is through multiplication and, and we're, we're that the, you disciple disciples, and so Lord, I just pray for a hunger for you, for you, for your word, and for the sun to stand still when it needs to for Amy and Mariah during just their their busy schedule, but um, that that you would continue to just pour your favor out and your blessings upon them. I I just pray for your best and your highest for anchor her and for the, for the women that uh, are being raised up with a truly a, a strong, only strong anchor that can tie them down when, whenever the storms of life hit them again. So thank you for what they're doing and thank you in advance for what you're about to do in Jesus's name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amy, tell a little bit about the gal who discipled you. I, I listened to the podcast you did with Eric Rochester, and uh, I was really interested in how that, um, you know, you had faith, but it didn't really take you. You didn't know how to apply it. And um, in the middle of your struggles, this woman, was her name Pam? Some, someone met you and began to disciple you. And talk about the difference that that made. Yeah, so when I met her at the shelter, she came alongside me and she just asked me, you know, what is the one thing that you want the most in life? 
Well, at that time, all I could think of is, you know, at that time I had two kids. So I was like, I just want a house. I want a house where we're not getting evicted, where we, you know, can go and be safe and good schools, you know. And she's like, okay, well, that's a vision, you know, just keep going for that. And so you got to take practical steps. And then she would just help like lay out the practical steps that I would need to do. And so that was so, I'm so thankful for that. I'll be honest. I don't even know if Pam was a Christian or saved. I just know that God hundred percent used her in my life and she helped me with the resources and needs. And then, yeah, I just, she showed, shared her story of hope with me where she had been and where she had gotten to. And that gave me just a, just a hope and desire. Like it really stirred up the hope. And so when we go and share our story with people, like that's the first thing you just see chains breaking because Mm -hmm. they get so hopeful and they're Mm -hmm. like, man, I can have that with my daughter, man. I want that relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it is just so exciting. Mm -hmm. So I'm so thankful for Pam and all she did in my life. And God uses everybody. Like he just uses people. That's beautiful. And Mariah, you do some of that kind of one-on-one discipling now, don't you? Tell us a little bit about the uh, the meetings that you have. Um, it's just a lot of just meeting with them, seeing first their critical needs, you know, what are their critical needs and going over that. And then now um, I'm working with a gal and we're just going through the book of Acts and really diving in. And it's so beautiful to just see their hunger for the word and wanting to know the word. And they just take it so literally and just to the heart and just going through and just, um, yeah, kind of like discipleship and just doing prayer requests and going over their prayer needs. And, um, and it's so cool to see then the people we mentor going out and then helping others and seeing them pray for others and wanting to bring people in. And, um, a gal that I am mentoring is starting now a home for people coming out of homelessness and addiction and it's in Lawrence, Kansas. And so she just started that. And so it's been awesome to see. That's so exciting. I love to see the the generations, not only physical generations as a mother and a daughter, but generations of disciples, disciples who make disciples who make disciples. So encouraging. Well, now kind of my favorite question um, is, what are you learning lately? Uh, like, what are some of the, th- the lessons God is teaching you? It could be around prayer or it could be around anything, but um, you know that the Holy Spirit's a teacher and, um, you know, he, he, he is constantly instructing us. So they don't have to be big, grand, grandiose kinds of things. It could be even a very small thing. But what are some of the things that, that God is teaching you? One thing that I know that he's teaching us, and she touched a little bit on it, is like the whole time it's been like cloud by day, fire by night with God and him leading us with the breadcrumbs and everything and just trusting him. But then I think at some point I was like kind of trying to jump ahead a little bit. And he's literally, it's back to just what is on your heart, Father? What do you want, Father? Because when I try to go out on my own and start something or I try to say yes to too many things, it never works right. And then I rein back in and I'm like, okay, Father, what is on your heart? Where do you want us to go? And I'm learning to be obedient to that part because it works out so much better. So good. Yeah. And yeah, that's one of the ones. Yeah. What are you thinking? Um, I would say for me, it's just thinking the God thinks so much bigger than we do and just seeing that. And even when we first started this, I was just thinking, you know, we're going to help the girls and get them, you know, sustainable and a place to live and food. But now I'm just like, oh my gosh, like they're thriving. You know, we have women starting homes and women becoming authors and God just does so much more than we can even think or imagine. So Mm. I love that. It's so, it's so encouraging. When I, when I started Love KC, Amy, one of the things that uh, the Holy Spirit whispered to me on, on one particular morning when I was having a a quiet time with him, praying and reading my Bible, I felt like he said, I'm going to lead you like Abraham a step at a time. And my feeling was at that moment, like, shoot, you know, I really want to see, like, where are we going? Like, (laughs) like, I want to see the the roadmap, you know, and uh, what I learned later is there's nothing more intimate than having to trust him really step by step. You know, when when you don't know exactly where you're going or how to get there, 
and you really have to depend upon God. That requires an intimacy that um, you might not discover any other way. And so that can really be a blessing. And so if, if right now you seem to to not necessarily know the next step, I would say, don't worry, you'll know it at the right time. Like when it comes time to make a decision, you'll know what decision to make and you'll know you'll know what to do because that's the way a good father leads his children. That's true. So good. I like that. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Well, Mariah, I wonder if you could, could you lead us in a prayer for anybody who is out there listening who may be trying to figure out what their next step is? Like maybe they're in a situation similar to what you are. Uh, you know that you have big visions and plans and dreams and hopes, uh, but life is daily and uh, we need God's help every day, every step. Can you just pray for the, maybe even picture some of the girls you work with as you pray uh, for these people who are taking next steps. So Father, we just thank you that you are a good father. You're our counselor. You're our friend, Father, and you just lead, guide, and direct us. And so, Lord, I just pray for anyone out there that's just seeking the next step, Lord, that you would highlight it to them, Father. What is their next best step, Father? And as our, a lot of our girls say, baby steps lead to great success, Father. So just show anybody who's out there, just what is their next baby step, Father? And just give them comfort, Lord, just comfort that you see them, you know. Give them patience, Father. And say, blessed are those who wait upon the Lord, Father. So I just ask that you'd give them patience, Lord. Mm-hmm. and comfort lord and just guidance father and um just the courage to step out to father just courage to get help if they need help or to make a next step lord just give them boldness father mm-hmm. and we just thank you that you're a good father in your eyes on the sparrow so we know you take care of us in jesus name amen amen, amen. i love that you know, Amy, when you thought about the opportunity to uh, be on the Love KC Today live um, show, live prayer time, uh, there may have been some things that went through your mind of, you know, oh, I'd like to talk about this, or I hope they ask me that, or uh, this is a great story I'd like to tell. We may not have hit on, on those particular things, but if there was something in your mind, I'd love to give you a chance right now to, to talk about that or share that story. Anything come to your mind that you'd like to share with those who are listening? Yeah, I think that um, I guess one thing I would say that I really like about our group and the support group at Homer's Coffee that we have is that women that have never heard anything about Jesus, know Jesus, they're knowing that if they come in there, that they're going to be seen and cared for and loved no matter where they're at. And so I just encourage people, you know, everybody says like, they call our group church. They call it faith based. They, there's so many names for it. And yes, it's all of that, but it is just so open, open armed and loving mm-hmm. and anybody can come at any point in their walk. And like I said, I didn't, I loved, I loved God. I thought I loved God and knew God, but I really didn't have that true relationship until later on. And mm-hmm. it's just about taking those steps and getting in. So we just want everybody to know that they're just welcome at any place that they're at and that we just love everybody. is so diversified and beautiful in our group. Yeah. That's awesome. So Mariah, how do people find you? If someone wanted to check you guys out and learn more, how would they do it? Um, they can find us on Facebook, Instagram, our website, uh, www.anchorherd.org. And then um, a lot of referrals we have are word of mouth, too. Or they just come to our support group on Monday night at Homer's Coffee, 6 to 8. Mm-hmm. Um, they come and find us there. And that's always a good starting point for people to find us. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, John, John Duet has been sing- singing your praises and wanted to have you on for some time. Uh, John, anything you want to add? You've been doing a lot of listening. I haven't called on you, but anything you want to add? I call Amy my one wonder twin. And so and she had, she always finds all these great graphics to, to send back on, her, on wonder twins. But it's, again, it's just encouraging knowing that, because I, 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 I touch the same type of ministries when they when they come out of incarceration or rehab and it she's they're both just a a big encouragement to me to keep pressing on 
and um, to know even because I know some of the battles that they've had to face um, and they they press through those and here we are and and God is pleased with with everything he's blessing the ministry and so yes if you're a woman uh, Monday night six to eight at Homer's off of 80th and, and Metcalf and the same thing as Saturday mornings at from 7 to 9 a.m. and Wednesday from 6 to 8 at Homer's too for men and women. And I think there's men that come to yours on Monday night too. Aren't there a few? The last, uh, yeah. last Monday of the month, we do. We okay. have men only once because it's trip. We like to keep it a women's group. All right. Okay. Yeah. The men will distract you. <laughs> I don't want the 13th stepping going on. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, that's great. Well, John, tell people how they can get a hold of your daily devotional. Well, they, uh, you could send me an email if you'd like to get blind copy down an email and send that to dewittj, D-E-W-I-T-T-J at live.com or on Facebook, you can like the Facebook page, Stretcher Bearers, two words, Stretcher Bearers, and you'll see them posted every morning there. A little encouragement, a little God's word. Yeah. So if you're joining tonight, maybe you just joined to listen to uh, Amy and, and Moriah, a uh, little bit about Love KC. Love KC you, is a um, ministry that helps people learn how to live their faith with confidence and know what to say to their friends to lead their friends to Jesus. So you can find online tools. You can go to the Love KC Today Facebook page and find these um, live prayer sessions every Sunday night at 6 p.m. And then you can also find two podcasts a month. And what we try to do at Love KC is help individuals, help churches or ministries be able to live the life with such a... Um, an intimate and joyful life that other others want in. And then we, we help them live a pray care share life style is what we call it to adopt their neighborhood um, and to be able to in their neighborhoods um, lead others, lead others to Christ. And we use a tool called bless every So if you were to use bless every you would get five neighbor names every day for which to pray. And then um, every day would literally walk you around your neighborhood. 40 is usually the default number, but you can also add in friends. You can add in relatives. You can add in anybody without an address. They'll show up in your daily five. It's just a great reminder of a way to start your day with prayer. So I have a prayer reminder set up to pop up on my phone and you can use the app or you can use the online tool. And it just reminds me to pray for my neighbors and, um, you know, our neighbors aren't just our literal neighbors. They're uh, anybody in our sphere of influence where we live, learn, work, or play. So we love, love uh, meeting new friends in the ministry. Thank you, Amy. And thank you, Mariah. It's been great to have you tonight. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. thank you John. Thank well, God bless you guys. Have a great week to come. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.